Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first episode of Beyond the Breakdown with Six Scars. I am joined tonight by my good my guest, Geo Stowe of the deck of many bands from the indie community, as some of you may know. So, Geo, go ahead and say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, one of the things I was really interested in when you told me that you wanted to be on this was you said you had a lot of uh, input as far as mental health goes. But before we get to that, I wanted to know how music became such a big part for you, because clearly it has directed a lot of your life. Well, I can, I can actually answer both, both questions with the same kind of answer. Um, my entire life has been ruled with music. Um, starting with my background, I am half Latin. My mom is from Panama. So there's a heavy, not understanding you know, under, underestimating or understating heavy influence of music in that culture. Um, I grew up surrounded by it. And uh, from, the, from the very beginning, there was a connection between music as a storyteller as, in as much as it was a guiding light um, to you know, kind of teach you, you know, what, you know, what it was about or what you're about, you know, and connecting that with dance and, and singing and communication. Uh, it, was, it was a teacher. Um, the connection with me directly, uh, I had a high school band. Um, I knew at the time, uh, we weren't going anywhere. It's, I have, I have a voice, uh, that ever since it changed, um, can put a corpse to sleep. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knew. I mean, I have to I, raise my nose, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, I knew that I wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, but but I knew and I could see in the people, you know, our, our, our four-member fan club uh, <laughs> at the time. Um, I knew that it was making a, a connection, and I knew that it mattered at that point. Um, and one of my deepest regrets was the day that we all graduated. Um, and at the, almost the same exact time, we just kind of looked at each other and goes, well, that's it. Uh, you know, we're done. And we went our separate ways, um, and never looked back. Uh, it's kind of a, yeah, historical, uh, a historical regret that has kind of haunted me my entire life. Um, and it's just kind of, kind of, you know, taking that staircase up or down, uh, to where it led me. Yeah. Have you ever thought about, you know, re making another band to follow up with or just no. not the same desire? <laughs> it's the, 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 the desire for a connection, the desire for that level of communication or that connection never went away. Um, and that's why I think as a voice actor, um, I think that's why I do what I do. Um, it's I'll, I'll hit the grind and I'll do the 30 second, you know, buy the avocados. They're on sale, uh, <laughs> uh, in the, in the hopes of working towards that, you know, working to that ultimate goal of getting into the position where I can actually tell the story. Um, yeah. I can make a connection and, you know, it's, I, I've been, I think I missed my shot is, is what that has to do is that it's gone. Um, but it wasn't necessarily a bad thing because what it did was make room in my life for somebody to tell me their story. Um, and it's, you know, in, as time passed, it's in the position in the, in the state that I was in, that's what it took. Uh, it took finding somebody that would tell me their story. Uh, the, the music that I would hear. Um, that brought that passion back uh, and kept that connection going and brought back every memory, good, bad, and otherwise, of, of what that felt like. Um, and it gave me a purpose. 
And that's why I'm here today. That's that's really awesome. I didn't know you were a voice actor. That's always been a huge like dream of mine as well. And I just never got into it. <laughs> well, in in the community that we're in, especially with the the people that surround us and, and how we make <clears throat> Nobody, nobody really hears the voice, um, but they can they can see the sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> and I am I am notorious uh, for for being a supplier of sarcasm, and and it's because nobody ever you know it's very rare. I don't know if you understand how paralyzing my stage fright is. Um, it's I I, I understand. Yeah, it's well, something I, I recently, you know. I did the math today. Um, it has been exactly four and a half years since I've been on camera. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> and you know, the voice. You know, I'll be on microphone, uh, but it's it's four and a half years. Last week, um, that I've ever had a, a camera on my radio face. Um, so. Well, well, truly, thank you. That that means the world to me that you've opened up this way already. Because I know, for me, stage fright is something that I still have to overcome every day. I have a lot of what I call physical flaws, and I'm not necessarily the best on on camera compared to some of the people that you'll see. But it's something I felt was so important that you know I wanted to make a podcast where it's not just messages behind a 30 second clip where people just share it around and they think that's what a definition of something is, or that's how you overcome things. I'm not saying it can't do that, but I I feel like, you know, there's a need for something so much more raw and vulnerable and actually eye opening. And so just, you know, from, from the bottom of my heart already, I thank you for giving me that, like that, that means the world to me. Oh, absolutely. It's, you know, like I said, like I said, when we were making our plans, the message is too important. And it got to the point, um, you know, speaking directly with with, you know, mental health and, you know, specifically the phobias. The, the message is too important. Um, it's, you know, I'm not I'm not offering a TikTok cure. I'm exactly. not, you know, I'm not a therapist. All I can be. Aside from deaf is. Um, all I can be is, uh, a resource. Um, I can, I, you know, I can't promise to solve somebody's problem. Um, but I can promise that I'll be there. Um, I will listen. I will, I will do what I can. Um, I have an army behind me. Oh, that's so Uh, cool. (laughs) Um, at your disposal, uh, that is for anybody that needs me. So, <laughs> and yeah, you know, all the way up to where am I? All the way up to my sepsis star, uh, and a lot of credit goes to sepsis. Uh, my band out of New England, not my band, but no, band no, I'm familiar with yeah. <laughs> the band. They're, they're me, amazing. Though. Yeah, and you know, I give them all the credit uh, for for where I am because I honestly believe. That without them um, finding me when they did, um, I wouldn't be here. It's wow. it, it was dark. I was in a dark, dark place. And it's them specifically. Uh, but more generally, it's the independent music scene. That passion uh, that, that refocused me, you know, replanted me. Um, and I owe you guys a debt. Uh, and that's what I'm doing. Well, we owe you though, because I mean, you went out of your way. You started this entire deck of uh, deck of the many bands, I believe, is the exact title of it. Is that what it is? The deck of um, many bands, exactly. The deck of many bands, exactly. And what is it? Ninety ninety two cards per series. It's ninety two cards per series. Um, and every time I get a band uh, that wants in. Um, you know, every, every band. Oh band, man, I, <laughs> I wasn't gonna band. ask to see it. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are my pride and joy. They came out so much better uh, than I ever expected. 
um, as far They're as beautiful. You know, the, the sizing and the color and the texture and just the feel of these. Uh, but more importantly, it was that source of the search. Uh, every band I talked to directly, um, I was looking for um, permission uh, to, to listen to their music. Uh, and you know, this was a way of saying thank you for that because it gave me that exploration of, of just, just going out on purpose and discovering, uh, this incredible community, uh, and this incredible music that I never thought was going to get as big as it did. I mean, it's, no. it's world, it's worldwide. Uh, yeah. This is international <laughs> and, and it slowed down a little bit with series two. I'm almost there. Uh, um, but you know, every time a band contacts me and says, I want it and I go, you're in. <laughs> so they, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, but the, the reason I built the deck, uh, was to give people the opportunity, uh, to have the same resource that I did of, of giving that, you know, kind of bizarre way, but giving that, that chance of just discovering that song they needed to listen to, you know, that sound mm -hmm. they needed to hear, uh, because you never know where it's going to come from. Uh, and, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, um, kind of want to go back a little bit. You said that, um, sepsis found you and it was in a really dark place. Mm -hmm. Um, are you wanting to open up a little bit about that now, or do we want to just kind of baby step into that? I can, I can, I can do both. Um, Are you sure? I, you know, no yeah. pressure. No, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. No pressure. Twist my arm. I'm on camera. Sure. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Again, this can all be edited. Yeah. So, it, you know, no, no, it's fine. It's, I don't expect any edits <clears throat> because it's, it's just the way it is. Um, my story doesn't change. It, it started. And what it is, is, hold on. There we go. Um, what it is, is I was actually online, just putzing around on Twitch, um, getting drunk. Uh, just, you know, I was playing marbles. It's, I don't know if anybody, you know, <laughs> knows or what, you know, knows what that game is. Um, but I was getting drunk on a night uh, that I had just gotten in a fight with my wife. Um, and, you know, very dark, you know, very, very bad fight. Um, and I had decided that it was, it was time for me to go. Um, so I was playing marbles because basically it was just a, a game of, of gravity. It's just, it sends you where you're going to go. Uh, whether you win or lose, you're just kind of at the mercy of everything that goes around. And that's kind of where I felt I was. Uh, I wasn't in control. Um, and it, it got to a point that, that it was just a matter of, you know, granted, I'd, I'd just come in last in the race, uh, which didn't, <laughs> didn't help matters. Um, but it was, it was, I thought at the time that the world need, didn't need me and it was time to just make room for somebody that did. Um, and it was at that moment, I mean, literally to the second that sepsis jumped into this, you know, into this Twitch session uh, and said, hello. And I decided to click on their link and see what they were about. And I heard their song um, is, is you already know. Uh, and it was amazing to me, uh, the, the, the passion, uh, coming from this little girl's voice of, of such wise, wise words, an older song, um, but wise thinking of already know how, how people are going to turn out before, you know, when you meet them. You, you get this inner voice of, of, you know, what they're going to do to you, what you're going to do to them, you know, how much they matter or don't. Um, and that, that provoked uh, more, explore, more exploration 
of, you know, listening to their music and going deeper. And that was it. Um, that music uh, showed me a motivation that I remembered uh, when I was doing it. Um, and I'm like, okay, they're where I used to be. I can travel this road again, you know, through their eyes um, and offer, you know, my, my wisdom um, when they want it uh, to, to see, uh, to see where this passion was supposed to go. And it gave me a purpose um, to, to watch over them because I know the mistakes I made. Um, and I wasn't going to let that happen to somebody else. So I went from being done to being a self-appointed guardian angel. And it, I never, I, I haven't looked back. I support them. I talk to them. I offer my sarcasm. They introduced me to a world of independent bands. And it, it brought me to where I am with a dedication, a focus, a passion of offering my help to anyone that asks. Um, because just as much as, as making a difference to just one person, whether I know them or not, uh, the idea of making a difference to one person um, makes it all worth it. Uh, it makes me worth it. Um, and it's a debt that I will pay. I'm not going anywhere. Wow. Wow. You just, you said goosebumps of my arms. I mean, it's almost like you're a real life Batman. <laughs> you became the, well, the silent guardian in a way. No, no, no. I mean, you know, all joking aside, but no. I mean, that's a beautiful transition to go from. Because I know when I've been in my lowest points, uh, very similar to you, where I just kind of felt like the world didn't need me. And you get to that point where you're just, you're trying to find a way to make all the inner pain or outward pain just fade away. And you, you, you turn to all these different vices I I would drink a lot. I I did a lot of drugs back in the day. Look like, but I'll be candid. You know, this is you know, this is one hundred percent me. That's that's all I can be. Um, and you know, it took in a similar fashion. It took finding different bands that inspired me when I was still a teenager. You know, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen years old. But those are I, I think your most some of your most formative years as far as how your brain gets settled in. And if you tell yourself from, I think a younger age that, you know, this is kind of the way it is. It's hard to get out of that mentality just as it is when you get older too. And for me, uh, much like you finding an independent band, mine was carbon stone. Um, I found them in Oh five and Oh six. And it was at such a pivotal moment in my life where I can remember listening to them for the very first time. And I remember I had a, a beer in my hand and I was sitting on the edge of, uh, sorry, I was sitting on the edge of a, uh, a little rooftop and it was their song, a simple smile. And it was on YouTube and I had a little laptop that I was looking at it and I had all intentions. I had all intentions of just going away. Like you said, you know, um, un unfortunately can't use the, 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 the trigger words on lot. Yeah, you, exactly. you know? exactly. So, yeah. so the, but, um, just going away and I heard that song and then I don't, I don't think it was necessarily the song. I just, his voice resonated with me. And then I went on their MySpace and I found, other songs of theirs that did resonate with me. And then just like, you know, from them, I remember the same day I found 10 years and they became one of my all time favorites. And they, all these bands have saved me in so many ways. And it's, it's really, really cool to get to talk to somebody who has had a similar, but yet, you know, obviously paralleled 
experience from from what I've gone through and where you said that, you know, you kind of became a, a guardian angel like that, that sends shivers up my spine because in a way that's kind of what I want the, the, the message to be for this is, you know, for me and perhaps you're different, but I know I can't get rid of the thoughts of going away. I, I, I don't think I'll ever be able to, that's just how my mind is, but I don't think we need to run away from it either. No, uh, you don't. And, you know, not to, not to cut you off, the, no. the, you know, the, the issue isn't so much the pain, the pain is going to happen. Life is here, uh, to kick your ass. There's no denying that you know, there's no Absolutely. other purpose that it serves the strength of character, the, the, the decision that you make, uh, throughout your life, the choices, good, bad, doesn't fricking matter. Uh, it's, you have to get to a point, um, within yourself, uh, and this is going to touch on something that, that's really, really close to me too. Um, the, the choices that you make aren't necessarily for you. They're, they're supporting or denying or shattering or creating a mask um, and the mask is a stigma. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I believe um, it's not necessarily a bad thing um, because it will give you um, strength. Uh, my alter ego uh, video goth uh, is the sarcasm machine. He is not a nice person. Um, he grew up with me, um, torturing me. Uh, and it was that, that stereotypical voice in your head, um, that had decided that I didn't matter to him. Um, and it took music to give me the strength to tell him to go to hell. Um, I gave him a job and I made him a clown. And every time, every time he gets laughed at, I get a little bit stronger. Uh, and he'll, he'll have his moments. He'll, he'll get back at me. Um, but I've grown to know that I make my own decisions. It's, you know, my purpose isn't necessarily for me anymore. I have my wife, I have my kids. Um, I have my grandchildren. Um, and I have a legacy now. Uh, and it has nothing to do with me directly. It has to do with what I can leave somebody else. And, uh, you know, I agree with you. I don't think the thoughts will ever go away. Um, but as long as, especially guys, um, but as long as people know uh, that there are people they can talk to, um, then, then I think it can, it can be productive. And I think that we can, we can save a legacy. And, you know, that's what got me thinking when you brought up, when you brought up the, the podcast, that's what got me thinking. And that's what got me passionate uh, because I am not, I, I will not uh, let anybody make the same mistake I made. Um, and I can get combative and, you know, I can unleash vid. Uh, and he, he has, you know, the, the running joke with sepsis. He has Shakespearean rage uh, and a lexicon that will destroy your mental state. Uh, and I can use that to destroy the funk that you're in. Um, and you know, that's his job now. Uh, he hates me for it, but I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm here for them and I'll use my tools and, and I've got a really big deck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, absolutely. And, you know, we'll, we'll follow back up with uh video gox. I, I find that to be very interesting as well, but 
something you said that, you know, it, it doesn't get talked about a whole lot is especially men. Uh, they tend to feel a little bit more alone than, than some. And, you know, that's a stigma for a lot of men to say anymore because it, it seems, you know, to be all the rage about men not really needing help anymore. And to me, that is the most perverse and sick thing that you could teach men of this world anymore, because this world, I am a firm believer that the world we are raised to believe in and be a part of, it no longer exists. It, right. it, it changes so rapidly and quickly. And there's so many people, not just men, but there's, there's so many men that, that do feel alone because when you're raised, you're, you're told to be a certain way, you're told to act a certain way. And then when the world kind of chews you up and spits you out un, unforgiving, Lee, it, it's just it's it's really important for for men to know that there is a place for them to go and to to be heard without judgment and without prejudice and that's why i, I honestly started this was because i i, I could listen to a, a thousand different mental health podcasts and things like that but i wanted to discuss from my point of view where i've not always felt like there's a place for me to go that I wouldn't be judged because often in the world, when, when you are a man, or if you're, you're, if you're attempting to put on that brave face, people dismiss you. If that makes yeah. sense, you know, they, yeah. they look at you and they're like, Oh, it, it's just a face. It's, it's, you know, you'll have your moments and you'll, you'll be done with it in no time. You just have to trust the process. And it's like, you know what? Fuck the process sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse the language. Society, I just, you know. no, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, it's, it's society as a whole has created the situation that, that contradicts itself. It, the world has created in it for a man specifically, nothing, you know, not disregarding anything else, but mm -hmm. for man specifically, the world has created as a situation and an image and a society societal role uh, that perpetuates the biggest lie a man could ever tell. And the biggest lie that a man could ever tell is when they look at somebody else and say, I am fine. Mm -hmm. It's bullshit um, mm -hmm. because we're, we are not allowed in our role, we are not allowed to cry, you know, to, to go to the center of the mosh pit and hug, you know, it's, there's, yeah. there's a lot of things that society has, has put in place and they are changing. I will give it that. Um, but it's been a long time, um, where, the world says, no, you're a guy, you're, you're on your own. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're bred to be the survivor. Um, and you know, my dad did that. I'm sure everybody's dad at some point did that. And it was, you know, a hard lesson to, to crack that habit. Um, and you know, I think it creates the biggest problem is that when you're, when you grow up in that atmosphere, and you're you're told and it, and it's pounded into you that you have to solve your own problem. That what it does is it drives you know it drives you inward. It doesn't it doesn't give you an outlet, and that creates a whole different set of problems. Um, and it's it's the worst thing the world has ever done. Uh, and you know, like you said, fuck the world. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this, yeah. This, you know. It's they wanted they wanted a war. They got one now. Yeah. And and I'm not afraid to fight for anyone. Absolutely. So. And I mean it's 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 good to know that there's still people out there willing to do that fight openly because there's so many people that will closet and go out and be, you know, oh, I support, you know, mental rights, but only if it's for a specific thing. When it comes to, you know, 
talking about men's rights, you honestly, and maybe, maybe it's just the feed that I have, but you don't see much in my opinion, you don't see much about men needing to be lifted up and being told that, you know, it's okay to, to not be okay. Right. Like that, right. that's an important thing. And like you said, you know, when you have that kind of pounded into your head day in and day out, like this is what society expects you to be. It's a very hard characterization to break. Yes. Yes. And so to move on a little bit from that and go back to um, video golf, what intrigued me was you, you talked about it as an alter and um, I do have borderline personality disorder, so I can kind of understand the, the uh, meaning of alter. And um, I, I think it's really just really kick ass that you've taken what held you down and honestly made it your bitch. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, and that's what it took because he was he was destroying me. Um, he was, you know, uh, his purpose. Um, if nothing else, this will get me emotional. Um, his purpose was to isolate me. Um, you know, his and this is this goes way back. I've had him next to me since I was nine. Um, he was created out of childhood trauma. And um, he was born to be my protector, uh, but he took it to an extreme uh, and he wanted to shut me off from the world uh, at all cost. And for a while I let him and, and I became very dark and I became very scary uh, because he was in control and it took me a long time, uh, to fight my way out of that. It, you know, it puts the lotion to the basket. Um, it, it took me a long time to, to, yeah, yeah. It took me a long time to fight my way out of that dungeon and, and take back over. Um, and you know, it's, you know, he has been, a knight. He has been a warrior. He has been a king. Uh, he has been a teacher. Uh, he has been a clown. Uh, at times, he would he would allow me to laugh uh, at some of the dumbest things um, you know in the world. Uh, but what I came to realize that he was making me laugh at other people's pain and I wasn't going to do that. It's, you know, he is the ruler of a dream world and you know, the, the, the peace treaty that we have going on right now is that he can have the thoughts, uh, but I control the dream and and he, he was tricked uh, because now he's the clown again and he's lost his control. And so my role is, is now the guy in charge. And my job is to get him laughed at uh, because the less power he has, uh, the more is given to me. And I don't know if I can ever survive without him. Uh, because he carried me and I can't deny that. Uh, but he will never have that much control over me again. Um, it's, it's, it's how serial killers are born. And I, <laughs> you know, I, I can't, I can't go there. Um, it's, I've never, I've never liked that aspect of him. And I want to, I won't allow it. It's I'm here. I'm here to help somebody. I don't know who, uh, but I'm here to help. And, you know, it's you know, the power's mine again. And I'm proud of that. So that's, again, that's, that's really amazing to hear. Like as somebody who has had childhood trauma themselves um, of, of different kinds, 
you I'm trying to think of the best way to word it. You you split yourself, you splinter yourself to protect yourself. And I I know for me, <clears throat> sorry, getting a little. <clears throat> I know for me, um, much in the same vein, the 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 person that. I hated being was also the one that brought me through so much of the darkness that I went through because I had, I, I had to become that to make sure I could survive. But then, you know, much, much like in your sense where it tried to completely take over me and for years, for, for almost a decade, I, um, I'll even say it took full, full control. I was a, a dark and I don't want to say evil, but just dark with no hope. And it's, it's because yeah. in your mind, it, for, for me, I don't, I don't want to speak for, for everybody, but for me, it was fight or flight and yeah. it was constant survival, which meant there was no time for let up. There was no time for, breathing it was just constant defensive and that is so exhausting it, it is so mentally draining and the more i learn about you know why we create our our altars it it baffles me in the way that it's so easy to let it slip and then you just kind of can regress if you're not careful yeah. and i love it's, the it's not it's not so much the evil part of it. It's, it's, you know, the protection from an outside view protection is evil because it's not allowing somebody who wants to take advantage of the situation in that must be evil. Um, the, the worst part about an altar, uh, and you know, it's, it's not, it's not as extreme as I'm sure some people are thinking right now. Um, you know, the, the, the issue with an altar is that it eliminates empathy. It eliminates mm -hmm. the ability, it eliminates the ability to care. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it's, you know, to, to come back to, to getting grounded, the music is the passion that, that creators provide to demonstrate their their passion to demonstrate what they care about and in discovering music and hearing music and looking for music and finding that sound you have shared something to care about and you have refocused the passion that you have to protect yourself um music is a wall um that will protect you but it's also a wall with a door and yeah. it lets you not only it it not only lets that emotion back in, it lets you more importantly, in my opinion, it lets you out. Uh, and with that, you can take that same message that that saved you. It, you can take that same message and let somebody else hear it because you'll never know that maybe that's the sound they needed to hear too. And wow. you know, that's that's why I'm here. Wow. You do. <laughs> you keep giving me goosebumps over here with your answer. So I, I apologize <laughs> for the delay. It's just, you know, no, it's, you're fine. it's, it's, it's hard to, to find people to connect with on that level where people understand what it's like to have altars and what, what that actually means. Because when people say altars, they automatically assume like, you know, serial killer they right. they they automatically assume the absolute worst which mm -hmm. let's be honest it can be the absolute worst it, it, mental death is is a whole other kind of death in my opinion that we all can experience um but just to to know that you know there's somebody who has felt similar things like it's for me it's reassuring to know that what i've felt isn't isolated and it's it's not just because I apologize. I, I get I get wrapped up in my head, and it's um, for a long time I felt isolated from the world 
And even as six scars, you know, we talk about alters. And I think for me, any persona I put on is, is a form of an alter. Like Mm -hmm. I, you know, six scars is, it's what helped bring me back a lot. It, 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 it became the outlet I needed because I would, I apologize. It, it became the fortress with a door. Yes. It, it gave you, it gave you the way out. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's, if, if you're a, if you're a comic book fan, you'll get the reference, but it's, it became my fortress of solitude. It, it really did. It's, it, it's where I go where I can just scream my lungs out at the world that ha- I feel has betrayed me at times. And I know without that, I would not be here. And so to, to, to hear another person's story resonate the way that music has with me in my life in a different fashion, it's, it's for me, it's mind boggling. And to hear how you've in a sense, you know, owned the, the altar within you that that gives me immense hope because I'm still struggling with that to be, to be transparent. Give him a job, make him, make him the clown. Video goth is in charge of my zombies. Um, Video goth is in charge of, you know, and, and to, to, to explain that the zombie is those ideas in your head that, never let you rest. You know, you'll get, no, I've got to write this song. I've got to write this lyric. I've got to write this note. I've got to write this. Zombies are those ideas that will never leave you alone. They sit there in your head and they just eat your brain. That's a zombie. (laughs) That's my apologies. My cat just decided to. (laughs) That's all right. My 15 year old is locked in his room. Um, (laughs) The, a zombie is is that idea that will not go away and it just sits there and tortures you i put vid in charge of those um and the credit that i give him is he gave me the passion and the focus to make the deck he's like okay fine i'll give you your fucking music but now you have to do something with it here's an idea and he let a zombie loose the deck was born Give your altar, give that emotion that is torturing you, give that pain a purpose. Um, it's, I, I, wrote, I wrote lyrics a long time ago of, of, you know, it was a letter to my daughter who was in her teenage years at the time doing the teenage thing. And I told her, you know, because we were having an issue with Facebook where I was seeing and hearing a lot of this, a lot of this emotional baggage being broadcast to the world. Um, And it wasn't, wasn't appropriate. So I wrote her uh, a song uh, about the darkest night. And the purpose of that was to, to try and show her that Facebook and social media and TikTok is not the place to collect pity. It is not the place to brag about how bad you feel. Um, What it is was a redirect of telling her and, you know, in the same vein of telling the world, if you hurt, what you need to do is give it a direction. If you feel that dark, paint a wall black. And every time you hurt, take a paintbrush with just white paint and put a dot on that wall. You know, it doesn't matter if you just do one or if you do multiple dots, but you know, make the wall as big as you want. But every time you hurt, don't do anything but put one white dot on that wall. And as time passes and you make that fanatical, you make that your outlet, you'll look back in the years to come at this black wall with all these white dots and realize that without broadcasting it to the world to, sh- to show how sad you are, to see, to show, to demonstrate, to, to illustrate how sad you are. You look at that fucking wall 
that caused you so much pain and realize that over the time you just filled a night sky with stars and wow. she did and she's still doing it she's 28 now um she's she brags about her galaxy and you know that's every time you write a yeah, every time you make a dot every time you create a star um you are creating an entire world of of what saved you uh and by the end of your life you're going to have a universe surrounding you um and you've protected yourself by giving your pain a purpose and it's for everyone to see and that's what i'm doing my i don't have a black wall um and and i can't i you know that's the worst i get <laughs> um i make the cards yeah it's it's not a podcast without a cat ass it's fine um <laughs> I tried to lock them out and I got one laying over here. The other just, <laughs> I apologize for the cat. Ass. <laughs> no, no, the the point, the, the whole point of it is that when you are hurting the most, you are the, all, you are also the most creative. Your mind will let you be, mm-hmm. um, give it a purpose. Do not let it win. Uh, if it's a poem, if it's a song, if it's just music, if it's, graffiti, uh, if it's a sculpture, it doesn't matter. What you're doing is giving it a home to live in that's away from you. And that's that gives you the ability to kill the zombie. It gets it out of your brain. It gets it out of your head. It makes it stop eating. And you've become your own hero. Wow. Wow. That's that's a that's a really insightful way to look at pain and anger as far as painting the wall. I've never heard of that. And that is there, there's a there's a profound feeling to that as well, because you're also looking at every time that you overcame your anger and your frustration, your guilt, whatever you were feeling at that point. And there there's such a, a meaning and the symbolism behind each one of those dots. And I to me, that's just beautiful. And the way that you said to you use the, use the zombies or use your altar to kill those zombies. It, mm-hmm. it reminded me of when I was working on my first album to will and to bloom. I, I was in a very dark mental state and that was the most creative. I think I've ever been to this day. I wrote that entire album lyric wise um in a month in a month and it's still it's the roughest work i'll ever put out but i will stand to this day and say i think it's some of the most gritty and meaningful work i've ever put out just because of how raw it was Mm -hmm. and i i agree with what you said you have to give your 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 pain a purpose because if you don't, the pain repurposes you into its tool. It becomes the zombie. It's in mm-hmm. there and it eats your brain. That's all, mm-hmm. it's, that's, it, that's all it knows how to do and until you give it instruction. That's, I've, I've never looked at it in the, the simplistic way of, of how we've talked about it. Not simplistic, you know what I mean? But just in broad strokes that way, it, it really is an eye opener for how you can approach it. Um, I know, I know this is already a lot longer than we probably planned on, but personally, I'm just having a great time talking to you. It's, um, I, like, can, I, I can talk about this. This is why I'm here. I can talk about this and I'm willing to talk about this whenever to whoever, for whatever purpose whether it's to laugh at me, whether it's to criticize me, whether it's because you need help, it doesn't matter. You pick up you know, the messenger, you pick up the camera, you pick up the phone, uh, and you call me. Um, it's, I have a reason to be here, and it's the music and the community and, and the passion that I was lacking, that somebody generously and unknowingly gave to me. And without hesitation, 
And it's because I was lucky enough to see that happen in myself. I could, I could take that and, and find out where it came from and know who to thank that I'm lucky to have found out that I can pass that on. And that is my purpose is to pass that on. It's I'm in the grand scheme of things, not that important. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but I have a purpose and I'm not going anywhere is I'm here to hear. I'm here to listen. I'm here to share the music. I'm here to admire the passion. I'm here to encourage the creation. Um, I'm here to make people laugh, uh, not only at themselves, but at my altar because he's an asshole. Uh, Absolutely. And, you know, and, you know, I have a job and that's what I'm doing. So, you know, I, I, I know we're, we're just continuing talking here. So I'm, I'm the yep. worst host ever at this point, <laughs> no, but so where do you see yourself in the, in the grand scheme of the community in, in a couple years from now, would you like to still be doing what you're doing now? Would you like to be in a different spot? What? Well, I would like, you know, in, uh, I would never, I will never walk away from the deck of many bands. As long Good. as there are bands, as long as there are bands out there, I will make a series. You know, they're they're only limited by the the size of the printer. Uh, that's why it has to stop at ninety two cards. Um, <laughs> and you know, aside from the fact that when I mail these fuckers, this is one pound of cards. Um, that's freaking expensive mailing to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> So I, you know, I want, I want to have enough, I want to have enough to justify that creation. Um, and I think in, in the grand scheme of things, this was kind of, this was kind of Vid's peace offering. Uh, and it was, you know, he's, he's thanking me for giving him a different kingdom uh, and, and saying, I'll leave you alone for a while here, have this. And, and as long as there is music out there, I'm being saved. Um, but it's also giving me the ability to create a resource that somebody else can be saved. And that music in that deck is something that somebody needs to hear. You know, I don't know who, I don't know what it is. I don't know which band, I don't know what song, but somewhere in that is something that someone somewhere out there needs to hear. And, and, as long as that exists, so will I. So, you know, that's that's what we're doing. Um, but as far as yeah, as as far as long long term goals go, you know, me and my dulcimer voice, my my ultimate goal is to be the the voice of a bad guy in a video game. Oh, absolutely! Let's go. You know, I, I, I want to be the bad guy. Dark side. Uh, you need to be dark yeah. side is what you need to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I could, I could do it. I could do it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think, I don't know the, the pipe dream, you know, the, the dream of the music of creating hasn't gone away. I think the driving force has, um, but you know, this is a good step for me, I think, uh, in getting over the stage fright. And who knows where it's going to go? It's, you know, just like somebody needs to hear the music. Maybe somebody's looking for a deep tone, you know, corpse poet. It's who knows? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I could start a world tour in a week. It's, it's who knows? Um, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, for now, I'm, I'm content. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm doing what I love. I'm listening to what I love. I'm talking to people that I love. I'm discovering music that I love. I'm, I'm helping people that I love um, in any way I can uh, because I have a debt to repay because if I didn't, I wouldn't be here to do any of it. And, you know, that has become my deepest regret is that it got so close uh, that none of this would have existed a year ago. And I'm not going to let it get that dark again, ever. <laughs> I, I am the same way. Um, I refuse to go back to being 
the the way that I was just a year ago. Um, mm -hmm. Had you had you told me a year ago I would be putting myself on camera in this kind of fashion, not like a controlled fashion, but just a raw version of me. And had you told them, had you told me I would be doing a mental health podcast, I would have laughed in your yeah. damn face. So I'd have been like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Who am I? First of all, mm -hmm. to even think about that. And then as I've, I, I, I'd like to say progress and become hopefully a better version of myself through the year. I, I realized I wanted to just like you, I want, I want to be that outlet, you know, yep. the, 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 the message of, of, of my music I've always said is I don't promote going away, but I promote a way to deal with the thoughts of going away because again, we can't ignore it. We, it, right. it, it's there. It's, it's always there. There's that shadow in the corner that when you're sleeping, it's still there and you yeah. can't get away from it. No matter what anybody says, there's no magic cure. You can obviously, you, you can medicate, you can do all these things, but I feel as though if you're not talking about it actively to at least one person, it eats you up. And I say that I think from experience, because for a while I hid a lot of what I felt, Like I would talk to them in passing about some of the things I was dealing with, but I didn't go in depth. I didn't, I didn't want to go beyond surface level because then people start kind of looking at you as though you're almost like a freak. The stigma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you, you, <sighs> You just, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it anymore. It's just, had you, had you told me a year ago, I'd be doing this. I, like I said, I would have, I would have never believed it. And I'm just, I'm, I'm truly honored to, to have you on here because you've, you've opened up my eyes already to a lot of things that could change as far as the way that I view things. And I think for the community as a whole that you I think you'll become a pillar. I really do. You already have in a way, but I think you'll become a bigger pillar. And I think that people will hopefully get out of their shell more, you know, just like as, as you and I have here, because it's, it's not always easy. It's not, especially if you feel like you're, you're not worthy of doing something or you're not worthy of being on camera because society puts these standards on you to, to feel a certain way. If, if and, you want to talk about, if you want to talk about not feeling worthy, you have to look at that through my eyes for a minute. I have at this moment right now, right now on my way to 184, I have 143 bands from around the world that know my name. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me how worthy, how worthy of that should I feel? Because that is my biggest issue right now is that I have people that I consider heroes writing my email saying, thank you for this. And I don't know how to politely say, oh, hell no. It's me that owes the debt. And you know, I graciously say and put on my mask and I say, the honor is mine. Um, the, that attention is debilitating, but in such a good way, because I know that they're providing me with the tools that I can do exactly what we're doing here is we're giving somebody the opportunity to hear words that they needed to hear, um, that they're letting me create something that will give somebody somewhere the opportunity to hold in their hands the music that they needed to save their life. That's all I can ask for. And there is no gratitude that I can display to any of the bands that will ever contribute. There is no level of gratitude that will equal that, that, that sense of worth that you guys have given me by just saying, I like what you're doing. Because what I'm doing means so much to me, let alone what it might mean to somebody else. And that's all that matters. 
you know, that's why, you know, I'm not trying to demean myself. It's that's why I'm not important. I'm just a messenger. Um, and I just hope that the message helps. That's all I can, that's all I can help for. You know, that's all I can hope for. Um, and you know, it's the music that matters and it's you guys. Uh, it's that community. Um, I'll be as strong as you want me to be. Uh, (laughs) but it's, it's so hard to hear from you guys that I'm important. And it's, it's such a weird feeling. Um, it is, but in, it is, but in such, but in such a good way. Yeah. Um, because in that deck is an illustration of a zombie dying, um, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, I'd rather it be them than me, you know, and maybe it'll save somebody else too. That, I mean, Wow. I, I I don't know if I could think of a better way to end this tonight than that right there, but I would definitely love to have you on again. Cause I feel like absolutely. you and me could talk for hours at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's, it, and like I said, it do not hesitate if in anybody out there, if this makes the cut, if anybody out there needs to talk to somebody who they don't know, who, who sometimes feels safer to talk to, uh, you know, than a friend. Um, yeah. I, I, I can't say that I don't judge, but I only judge my friends you know, and, and typically it's only to gather something to joke about. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ill-timed humor. Know, <laughs> yeah. When you, when you find a stranger, um, you know, they will become a friend, but when you find a stranger that you can talk to and you can talk to me, um, it's, the easiest solution to an immediate problem. It may not be a cure. Um, it can be, but it may not be. Um, but it will be, you know, the, the first step that matters, just like me getting on this damn camera. Uh, <laughs> it's, it only takes one step to get started. Absolutely. Uh, whether, you know, and that's, that's all I ask for is if you need somebody, you know, to listen, give me a chance. It's, I may not help, but, but you don't know. It it might solve the problem. So all I can do is say I'm here. That, yeah. I mean, and the community knows that too, especially now they, they, they know that you're here for people to reach out to, which is sorely needed, especially, especially in the community that has kind of been cultivated with us. So it's really great to have that outlet. And, you know, I'm going to put the link for the deck of many bands, but tell the listeners where they can find you. Uh, Right now, the best place to find me is on Facebook. Um, I am Geo Stowe. Um, I should have typed my last name, but oh, well. Uh, You can find me in uh, the band together group, uh, as well as just searching my name. Um, and if not, just ask any independent out- band out there. Odds are I've talked to them at least once, uh, and and you'll find me. And you know I'm not hard to find. It's if you find music, I'll be there. <laughs> that is amazing, Geo. Thank you so much for being on the first episode of this. And I'm I'm gonna have you back, hopefully sooner rather than later. Because like I said, we could probably make this a four or five parter just. From the vibe that I get from us, us just shooting. <laughs> uh, anytime, if if you need comic relief, if you need a, a PowerPoint presentation, if you need an army of dragons, uh, it's all you got to do is ask. This is this is too important. Uh, Absolutely. You know, I I hope it helps. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. And with that, guys, this is the end of the very first episode, and I will see you down the line. The Ratchet